Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. Today we are going to review about the basics of stats that you have learned in previous years. Before that, we are going to go over what we have learned in the last lesson. Here are a few questions, and it is asking you to categorize each one, one of these questions based on the types. Type A, statistical question requiring numerical data to answer. Type B, statistical data question requiring categorical data to answer. Type C, nine statistical question. Question number one, on average, how many books does each person in the United States read each year? If you ask this question to uh, the people you're gonna interview, you are gonna get different answers because different people may read different amount of books. And the kind of answers you're gonna get would be numbers, which is why this will be A. Question number two, how many acts are in the play Romeo and Juliet? For this one, no matter who you ask, you are gonna get the same answer. So there's actually no variability in your answers, which is why this is going to be type C. The third question, which book was read most by students in the class this summer? If you interview different classes, for example, in our school, you may get different answers. So your answers would have a rivality, but the answer would actually be title of books, which is not a number, which is why this is going to be statistical question requiring categorical data. So it's B. Last question, how many books are in the classroom right now? If we actually just take out all the books in the classroom right now and count all of them, you will get only one answer. That means there is no variability, so it's going to be nine statistical question. Okay, that's the quick review. Now let's go over some of the vocab that you may have learned before, mean, median, and mode. Mean, in other words, average is the average of the data. We typically add all the numbers together, then divide by how many numbers that we have in total. Median is typically the number in the middle of the data, and mode is the number that appeared the most in the data set. Moving on to some more definition. Statistics. This whole unit we're learning about statistics. It is the science of making decisions using data provides a set of organized rules we can use to make good decisions and convincing arguments. That's actually the main thing. Two of the most important questions we need to answer in order to understand a data set are, first question, what is the center? Like where is the center at? Or in other words, measure of central tendency. It helps us understand what a set of data looks like by identifying the central position. That's what it means within the set of data. The center helps us understand what happens in the data set on average. So the mean, the median, and the mode are all valid measures of central tendency. The second question, well, in that case, let's also identify uh, mean, median, mode. Mean, we typically add up all the numbers and then divide by the number of data points. Median, in order to identify the middle, we're not just gonna have a look at all the random numbers and just like count, choose the middle. We do need to put all the numbers in order and then find the middle. Mode is actually quite, quite easy to spot. You just see which one appeared the most uh, often in the data set. The second question we're going to ask is called, is called the spread. What is the spread? Or in other words, measures of variability. It helps us understand how much variability there is in the data set. For example, are the pieces of data close together or do they actually vary widely? Range, mean absolute deviation, interquartile range or IQR, and standard deviation are measures of variability. We'll learn more about a few of these things later in the unit. But for now, range. Range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So you just need the biggest number in the data set and the smallest number in the data set, subtract them. That will give you the range. Now let's have a look at a few examples to identify some mean, median, mode, and range. Example one. Well, not, the numbers are not in order, so we do need to put them in order first. Smallest 22. Next is 40. And next one is 51. Then 54. And then we have 60. Next one is 61. Then we have 68 and another 68. Then we have 70, 76, and 78. There we go. That's all the number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We have 11 numbers. Now let's identify the mean, the median, mode, and range. 
for the mean, you're just going to add all the numbers together and then divide everything by 11. The median, mode, and range. Range is the easiest to identify. You're going to use the biggest number minus the smallest number. 78 minus 22, that is going to give you 56. That is the range. And then mode is the number that appeared the most. You can see 68 appeared twice, so mode is going to be 68. Next, median. It is the middle of the data set. We have 11 numbers. So one thing you can do is you can cross numbers out from both sides. Cross out the 22 and the 78, then the 40 and the 76, 51 and the 70, 54 and 68, 60 and 68. Now we only have one number left in the middle, and that is going to be our median. The last thing is the mean. We're going to have to add all the numbers together and divide by how many numbers we have. So if you add all of these numbers, every single one of them together, that should give you 648. Then we divide that by 11, round to two decimal places. That means the mean is going to be 58.91. That is example one. Moving on, example two. Same thing. We have all the numbers here. We're going to add them all together. Well, let's put them in order first. The smallest 36, and then we have 47, then we have 54, two 54s actually, and then we have a 56. Next one, no 60 something, no 70 something, so it's got to be 80. Then we have 85 and 88. Next one is 91, and then 92. Here we go. We this, this time we have 10 numbers. So the mean, same thing. If you add all of these numbers together, that should give you 683. Let me rewrite that. 683 divided by 10. The mean is going to be 68.3, exactly. No rounding. Mean, median. This time is going to be a little bit different because we have even amount numbers. So let's start crossing numbers out from both ends. 36 on this side, 92 on the other side, 47 on this side, 91 on the other side, 54 on this side, 88 on the other side, 54 on this side, 85 on this side. So if you cross out another pair, 56 and 80, you will notice there's nothing left. So when we have even amount of numbers, the median will be in the middle of the middle two numbers. So in this case, we're going to add the middle two numbers. Instead of crossing them out, we're going to have to use both of them. 56 plus 80, and we're going to divide it by 2. So to find the middle of these two numbers, or in other words, to find the average of the middle two numbers, that's how we find the median. So it's 136 over 2. That is going to be 68. That is the median. Mode, the number appeared the most in this one is 54. And then range is the same thing. Biggest number, 92 minus smallest, 36. That is going to be 56. That is example two. Next, example three. Still the same idea, but this time we have decimals. We still need to put all the numbers in order. So the smallest I see right now is 12.7. Write that. And then the next one in the tens is going to be 18.1. Start comma, 0.1. And then we have a few that's in the 20 range. Smallest is 21.2. And then we have 21.3. We have 25. Next one is 28.6. And we have the 30 range. It's going to be 35.1. Next one is 36.7. Then we have 37.7. 39.8. And lastly, it is 47.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 numbers again. So for mean, we're going to need to add all of them together, which will give you 323.7 over 11. That is going to be 29.43. That is the mean. Median, 11 numbers. So you kind of know all amount. You should have the middle one left. So let's start uh, removing things from both ends. One here, up there, another pair, another pair, pair, another pair. Then we have one number left in the middle. So the median is going to be 28.6. Mean median mode is the number that appeared the most. 
In this case, every single number just appeared once. So we actually do not have a mode. There's, they all appear the same amount. Okay, the next range. Range is going to be the biggest number, 47.5, minus the smallest number, 12.7. That is going to give you 34.8. And that is example three. Now we have a question that looks a little bit different. You are given the data and the frequency. Here's what the word frequency means. It means the amount of time that this number appeared. So that basically means for the data two, it appeared seven times. So you actually want to write out the whole data set. It's going to be two, 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 seven of them. And then you have, it appeared four times for number three. So three, 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 three. Next, four appeared three times, four, four, four. Five appeared five times, five, 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 five. Next, six appeared eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is if you want to write out every single thing. And then in this case, if you want to add them together, if you haven't noticed, all the twos together will just give you 14 right here. All the threes together is a 12. All the fours is a 12. All the fives is a 25. All the six would be 48. So you are actually basically adding all of these numbers together to find the total. As for the amount of numbers, 7 plus 4 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8, that is going to give you 27. So there are 27 numbers in total. Or you can choose to just count all the numbers you have written down. Let's have a look. Mean would be uh, adding them all together would give you 111, then divided by there are 27 numbers in total, so the mean is 4.11, round to two decimal places. Median, there are 27 numbers in total. So you can choose to start crossing out, but you would actually cross out a bit faster if you want. So first, all the twos, that's seven numbers crossing out. And let's cross out seven on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. And then if you cross out all the threes, that's four numbers. Okay, one, two, three, four. That's four numbers. Now we're getting close to the middle. Let's cross pairs, pairs. You only have a four left right in the middle. That would be the median. Mode, the number appeared the most. Well, the frequency tells you how many numbers uh, they appeared. Eight is clearly the biggest frequency, which means six appeared the most. It appeared eight times. Range, the biggest number in the data set is a 6, the smallest is a 2, so 6 minus 2, the range is a 4. So that is example 4. It's a little bit different, uh, but like I said, based on the frequency, you can choose to write down the data set by yourself. Moving on, example 5. This one is still using the mean, the definition of mean, but it's a slightly different question. Let's say you would like to get an A minus, which is 75%. This is just a number from last year. Your current quiz scores are 65%, 90%, 82%, 62%, 74%, and 78%. What is the minimum score that you need in the next quiz to get an A minus overall? When we say to get an A minus overall, it actually means the average or the mean of your grade or the mean of your scores. So that means we do need to add every single number together. So you have a 65, a 90, an 82. Oh, shouldn't be comma, should be adding them together. You have a 62, you have a 674, you have a 78. And then you are still taking one more quiz. That is the next quiz. That's the one we're trying to figure out. So it's going to be an X. And including that next quiz that you will take, in total, you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven quiz scores. And they have to all together average an A minus, which is 75. So that's how you're setting it up. You have all the numbers that you currently have, then you do need to include this next quiz because that's an extra score that you will get. So you're finding all the totals for all the quizzes and then divide them by how many quizzes you have taken or plus the one you're about to take. Now we're solving this equation. We do need to get rid of the denominator first, multiply both sides by a seven. So we will have on the right side, uh, 525. And all the numbers on the top, well, that would just get rid of all the seven. And all the numbers on the top 
where you add them together is going to be 741 uh, plus the x. So now we just need to subtract 751 to the right side. So x is actually going to be 74. So what you need, the minimum score that you need is a 74% on the next quiz. Example six is quite similar. So you can choose to pause here and try example six before you check the answer, answers. Now example six, you would like to get an A, which is 87.5%, that's also from last year. Your current quiz scores are these, so let's add them together. 90.5, 90, 82, 80, 94, 98, and 93.5. Of course, you have an extra quiz you're about to take, so we do need to add an X. And if we include that quiz you are about to take, you will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 scores in total. And they have to average 87.5. So same thing. Let's multiply both sides by the 8 so, okay, so that we can get rid of the denominator. The right side, uh, that would be, let me think, that would be a 700. And on the left side, if you add all the numbers on the top of the fraction together, that's going to be 628 plus x. Then you subtract 628 to the other side, x equals 72, which means it has to be 72%. That is the score that you would need to be able to average an A. And that is everything for this review of basic stats lesson. Thank you.